Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moinuddin. Students, the topic of current video is the factors considered during selecting a method. In our daily life, we are encountered by various different problems in different fields. So particularly if we talk about the problems encountered in the field of chemistry, so there are different methods to, to there are different possible methods to solve a single problem so how to select a particular method so there are some factors which help us which help us out for uh, uh, for select uh, for selecting a particular method so in this video we are going to discuss those factors which are considered during selecting a method before starting the video if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it right now and also press the bell icon so you may get in touch with my upcoming videos and here are the different factors which must be kept in mind while selecting a method for problem solving and what are these so these are accuracy then precision then sensitivity then another factor is selectivity robustness rigidness and equipment and now we will discuss all of these in detail so the first factor is accuracy and what is accuracy it is the degree of agreement between the mere value and the true value means how close our result is with our expected value and this true value an absolute true value it is seldom known so sometimes we know that what should be our results we can by good analytical technique such as making comparisons against a known standard sample of similar composition arrive at a reasonable assumption about the accuracy of a method and how can we perform it for example we are going to measure the absorbance of our sample so we have different standards so first we calculate uh, the absorbance of some standard then we can prepare another solution of same concentration and then we find the absorbance of this solution so definitely we are expecting that its absorbance should should meet the value of that of standard we all, we have already measured and in this way we can judge the accuracy of a method but sometimes there is difference generated between mayor mayor value and true value and it can be represented as absolute error and relative error and now we will see what are these types of error so what is an absolute error it is the difference between the true value and the mere value for example if an analyst reports 2.62 gram of copper as 2.51 gram means 2.62 is the true value while 2.51 is the mere value so the absolute error can be calculated as mere value minus true value so absolute error is minus 0.11 gram if the measured value is the average of several measurements mean we run an experiment in replicates three times or five times so definitely in the end we take the average of those measurements then in this way the error calculated is called mean error then the absolute or mean error expressed as a percentage of the true value 
so it is known as a relative error and it can be calculated as Meyer value minus true value divided by true value multiplied by 100 so it gives us the relative error or percentage error and depending upon these relative or percentage error analytical methods are divided into three groups for example if this relative error is less than one percent the method is rendered as highly accurate while if the error is between one to five percent the analytical method is rendered as moderately accurate while if error is greater than five percent the method is supposed to be less accurate second factor is precision it is the degree of agreement between replicate measurements of the same quantity that is it is the repeatability of a result in chemistry whenever we perform an experiment we, pre we prefer to perform it in different replicates for example we we prefer to perform it thrice so we get three values and how much these three values are close to each other this is called precision for example while performing a titration so we calculate the volume used of that solution which has been filled in in the burette so we get three values of volume in three different in three experiments so suppose the values are 10.1 10.2 and 10.3 so means our results are very much precise and if we get the volumes like first time we get 9.5 next time we get 10.3 and third time we get 10.9 so these are less precise so this is called precision the precision may be expressed as the standard deviation so it may be expressed in the term of standard deviation or the coefficient of variation or as a confidence interval for example 95 percent about the mean values so these are different ways for expressing this precision and another thing to remember is that good precision does not assure good accuracy if the results are very much precise it doesn't mean that the method will be accurate as well for example the volume of a pipette used to dilute each of the sample may be in error mean the uh, uh, we are we are diluting our sample by the use of some pipette and uh, the volume uh, uh, the pipette is not measuring the volume uh, uh, properly means that is in error so which so it will not affect the precision means the result will be precise but it does affect the accuracy means the result will not be the accurate they will not be close to the true value on the other hand the precision can be relatively poor and the accuracy may be good so this could also happen but it's quite rare these concepts can be illustrated with the help of targets and bullets which are shown over here so suppose you are at target practice and you shoot the series of bullets that all land in the bull's eye we are talking about this target you have five different bullets and all uh, all fell into this bull's eye so means you are both precise and accurate and if we talk about the middle target 
So you have fired all the bullets over here, not in this bull's eye. But all are fired quite close to each other. So we can say you are precise, that is steady hand and eye. So you have a steady hand and eye, but inaccurate mean not accurate because you didn't fire over here. So there could be different reasons. Perhaps the sight on your gun is out of alignment. So this could be the reason. And if we talk about the third one in the right target, so you have fired on different locations. So you are imprecise and therefore probably inaccurate means neither it's precise nor accurate. So we see that good precision is needed for good accuracy, but it doesn't guarantee it. Third factor is sensitivity. It is a change in signal per unit change in the amount of analyte. Mean, when analyte concentration is changed, so definitely there will be the change in signal. So this is called sensitivity. For example, if we talk about the UV visible spectrophotometer, so we know that by change in the concentration of our sample, the absorbance changes and this is all about the sensitivity. It tells us how much the method is sensitive means if we change the concentration of an analyte, how our technique respond to it. For example, change in absorption in UV visible spectrophotometer by the change in concentration of sample as I mentioned earlier. Sometimes it is confused with limit of detection and what is limit of detection which is the minimum amount of analyte that can be determined using a particular technique. So these two things are quite different from each other. Next factor is selectivity. It is the extent that the method can measure an analyte of interest in the matrices of the samples being analyzed without interference from the matrix. So what is saying actually? We are running a sample and we have prepared our sample. For example, we have uh, made, uh, we, uh, we have uh, run the sample in the form of solution. So definitely we have mixed it in some suitable solvent and, and then we have put it into uh, some equipment and we are getting the signal. But in, in that sample, we, we are not interested in the whole solution. Actually, we are interested uh, uh, in the signal from, the, from that solute which has been dissolved to make that solution. So rest of the things, they are called matrices. So it is the extent that the method can measure the analyte of interest. So I think you got it, got the point that that solute here is called the analyte of interest. And the matrix, as I mentioned earlier, the matrix is everything in the sample except the actual analyte of interest. And the components in the matrix, they can interfere with the determination of the analyte. And this effect is called matrix, matrix effect. So selectivity means whether our technique, our method is able to detect the analyte of interest. So this matrix effect it may be either positive or negative mean this matrix it may enhance our sample or it may also able to reduce 
uh, our signal sorry it is a signal so matrix effect it may be positive or negative next factor is robustness it refers to the effect of deliberate small changes to the method on its performance mean we are deliberately changing uh, making some changes in the method so whether whether it is able to detect our sample of interest and a light of interest or not this is called robustness a method which has been developed to analyze and analyze whether it remain applicable when the matrix is changed so to explain it we have an example for example we are going to analyze lead and there could be different sample type for example lead may be present in water or it may be present in soil so these are two different types of sample lead in water and lead in soil so if the same method remains valid for determination of lead in water and soil if yes then this method is called robust so a, a method that can be applicable to an analyte in a wide variety of matrices is considered as robust next factor is rigidness a method that is insensitive towards the changes in experimental conditions like temperature pressure humidity catalyst light etc it is called rigid means if we make some small changes in experimental conditions uh, which are mentioned over here and method does not show any change in response so this type of method is called a rigid method and the last factor is equipment and we'll, we will see this factor with regard to two two different aspects that is cost and time if an equipment required for any particular method is too much costly then it will be difficult to opt this method means if the equipment which is required for some particular method that is too much costly so perhaps uh, the analysis performed on it definitely it will be too much costly and might be will, will be not able to bear those expenses so there could be the problem for us and the second one is if equipment takes too much time to analyze a sample sometime equipment is taking too much time to analyze a single sample so this could also be problem sometimes because this sometimes may be problematic if the samples deteriorate with the passage of time because the equipment is taking too much time and our sample are time sensitive that is they deteriorate with the passage of time so if we cannot use that type of equipment for the analysis of these type of samples so dear students this was all about current video but still there are a large number of videos in the pipeline so to get them in touch with all of those videos you need to subscribe my channel so thanks for watching thank you very much